All right, in this podcast, we're going to talk about different types of equations. There are several different types of equations that you're going to have to deal with. Um, the first is the molecular equation. The molecular equation is what you're used to. You're used to writing the equation, and then we assign the states of matter, which we'll get to in just a second. So this is what we're used to writing. The complete ionic equation is basically we're writing what would happen if we threw this um, <clears throat> mixture, this reaction, into an aqueous environment, into water. So if something were going to break into its ions in water, like ionic substances breaking back into their component ions, then that's where we're going to be writing this. And then the net ionic equation is when you take out all the spectator ions or the ions that appear on both sides of the equation and you get just what's really happening in the equation, what's really changing in that environment. All right, so molecular equations we're not going to worry about because you already know how to do those. Those are the regular equations we've been doing. Ionic equations are when you basically break it into its component ions. So you had um, lead nitrate parentheses 2. So we broke that back apart into lead 2 plus and 2 nitrates minus. Okay, Same thing for potassium iodide. And then the solids stayed together. And then again, another ionic breaks apart. So we're going to show everything as it would appear in water broken apart if it was ionic. Then you cross off all the spectator ions, and that gets you to the net ionic equation. So you cross out the things, let's see if we can erase them, okay, that are on the same. So we got 2NO3, 2K, 2K, 2NO3, okay? So those all get covered up. So in order to be able to do that, you have to first be able to tell what state of matter everything is in. So if you think to my periodic table in my room, the blue elements are going to be our liquids, so bromine and mercury. The red elements are going to be our gases, so hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, um, CO2. The noble gases are also going to be gases, but they usually are not going to react in a reaction because they're noble. They don't want to react with anybody. The black elements on my periodic table are going to be solids. Um, as well as any ionic compounds that do not associate in water, so the insoluble ones, which we'll look at in just a second. And then we also need to be able to tell what our aqueous species are, which means our um, solids that are going to dissociate in water, they're going to break up, they're going to dissolve in that water um, and split back into their component ions. These are going to be our strong electrolytes. So the ones that split up like most of our ionic compounds. All right, so here's the periodic table. You see the uh, red elements. These are going to be our gases when they are by themselves. Our two blue ones, those are our liquids. And then we have all of these black ones. Those are going to be our solids. Um, so that's pretty much how elements work, is they're all based on what state of matter they're going to be on the periodic table if the reaction's being run at room temperature. Ionic compounds are a little different, so let's look at those next. All right, now to deal with the um, solubility or if a ionic compound is going to dissociate and be aqueous, or if it is going to um, stay together and be a solid, we have to look to our solubility rules here. So solubility rules um, for AP Chem are that all sodium, potassium, ammonium, and nitrate salts are soluble in water. So if the compound contains any of these four things, they're soluble in water. That means that they dissociate, they break back up into their component ions, um, so they are considered AQ. If they do not contain one of these four, then we consider them insoluble, which means they're solid. That's going to be our precipitate. That's going to be our solid. Um, so we have to use these to help us identify what the precipitate is going to be or the solid is going to be in a reaction. So here we have a calcium nitrate and aluminum hydroxide, okay, um, 
combining and then they make calcium hydroxide and aluminum nitrate. So to determine the precipitate, we need to look at our solubility rules. Well, we see we have an NO3 on this one, which means that it is soluble. So this would break up. This is an AQ. And this one does not contain um, sodium, potassium, ammonium, or nitrate, which means it's our solid. So there's our precipitate right there. That's Ca and OH2. That's our precipitate. All right, basically this flow chart will help you try to determine how you're going to, uh, when you look at an equation, how you know if something's going to be broken to its component ions or it stays together, okay? Um, there are basically two ways to look at this. If it's an acid or a base, okay, then you have to evaluate if it's weak or strong, okay? If it is a strong acid or base, it means it breaks completely, it dissociates completely. That's what strong means, 100% dissociation. If it's weak, we're gonna leave it together because we know that that's a equilibrium problem, right? Okay, so very small dissociation, all right? Now, most things we deal with are not gonna be acids and bases, so we're gonna be going this way. Then we have to look and see if it's ionic or covalent. Molecular means covalent. Ionic is a metal and a nonmetal. Covalence when you just have nonmetals. Okay. Covalence do not dissolve in water, so you're just going to keep them together, write them as a solid or a gas, whichever they appear. And ionics, you have to determine if they dissolve in water based on the solubility rules, which we just looked at. Okay. So if it's soluble or AQ, then you break it into component ions. Okay. All right, when we're writing these ionic equations, we're trying to identify a precipitation reaction if it's occurring, which is basically if there's a insoluble product, okay? And basically when something is insoluble, that means that it doesn't dissolve very good in water and water molecules are not able to overcome the attraction between the ions to break them back into component ions, okay? Here's a really good example Okay, so you have Ki and PbNO3, parentheses 2, these are both AQ, so they would break up completely. And then we have a single, a double replacement reaction, so lead and potassium swap places, you get PbI2 as a product and KNO3 as a product. Okay, so let's try to look at this equation and write out the um, net ionic and complete ionic equation for it, okay? All right, we're not dealing with any acids or bases here, and we know that AQs are gonna break up completely, so we're gonna get a Ki breaking up into K plus and I minus, and then here again, lead nitrate is soluble, so we're gonna get Pb2 plus and NO3 minus, now there are two of those, okay, from here. And that makes, this is solid, so it's not going to break apart, so we're just going to leave it together. And then again, an AQ, so it's going to be K plus plus NO3 minus. Now it really helps if you have the sucker balanced initially, which we did not. So let's go ahead and balance it. So let's see, put a two there and a two there, okay? And let's go ahead and just throw all these balanced things in. It'll help a lot in a second when we go to canceling. Okay, so there's the complete ionic equation. And then you cancel things that are like on both sides. So I got two K pluses on both sides. Let's see, don't have I minus on that side. Don't have PB. But I do have NO3 minus, two of them on both sides. So this is our overall equation. So you get the 2i minus and your Pb2 plus, and that makes PbI2. So that's really what's happening in this reaction, and you're forming this pretty yellow precipitate here. Okay, precipitate, yay! Okay, so that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to identify the precipitate when you uh, write these complete ionic and then net ionic equation.
All right, and to end, I thought I'd give you a list of all of the rules for writing um, ionic equations here. So first you want to write the balanced molecular equation. Remember the molecular equation is what you're used to, so just the balanced chemical equation. Then you take all the electrolytes and you break them down. So that's going to be your ionic substances that are AQ and um, all those things. Now you cannot break down solid gas or water. <laughs> And then you're going to cross out everything that's the same on both sides. Those are your spectator ions. And what's left gives you your net ionic equation. Okay, so those are the steps in order. Okay, so I wanted to give you um, a couple of examples of how to do this. Okay, so here is a double replacement reaction. Uh, potassium iodide. Um, silver nitrate, and that's going to make uh, potassium nitrate and silver iodide. Okay, so using our solubility rules, we're going to go through and label everything by its state of matter. So this one is AQ, this one is AQ, this one is AQ, and then this one, it doesn't have any of the four that make it soluble, so it's going to be an S. Mom. All right, so this is the molecular Mom, equation. All right, so that's our complete um, equation, our complete reaction equation, so molecular equation. So now what we want to do is we want to do our um, ionic equation. So we want to split up anything that's AQ into its component ions. So we got K plus and I minus and then AG plus and NO3 minus, and then on this side we have K plus and NO3 minus, and then this one's a solid so it doesn't break up, it's going to stay together, so we're going to leave it as AGI. All right, now this is the point where we want to cross out our spectator ions, so anything that occurs on both sides of the equation in the same state we can cancel. So how we have a K plus here and a K plus there, they cancel. And then we have an NO3 here and an NO3 there, they cancel. Everything you just canceled, those are called your spectator ions. Then you take the leftover and that's going to give you your net ionic equation, your final equation. So this is what actually happens. So we get this um, solubilized AQ iodine and the AQ silver and it forms silver iodide solid. All right, another example. This one's a little bit harder. Um, for this one, I went ahead and gave you the state of matter. So I went ahead and told you that that one was um, AQ because it doesn't really follow our solubility rules that are given. So I'm going to tell you that one. The rest of them we can use our solubility rules for. So this one's got the ammonium, so it's AQ. This one's got the ammonium, so it's AQ. This one doesn't have any of the four, so there's our solid. Okay. Now, technically, you should have your equation balanced. Um, so if we were going to go and balance this equation, we'd put a 3 there, a 2 there, and then a 2 there, and a 3 there. Okay, so now when you write your net ionic, I mean your ionic equation, excuse me, um, you're going to split up everybody that's AQ, right? Okay, so our AQ guys are going to be our NH4+, plus, and we have 3 times 2, so we have 6 of those, and then we have PO4+, three minus, and we have two of those, and then we have, um, oops, that should have been a six. We have six RB, one pluses, and three SO4, two minuses. Okay, now on the other side, the first one's going to break up into six, NH4 one pluses and three SO4 two minuses. 
and I'm going to have to drop it down to the next line for my solid, um, two RB3PO4s. And that, of course, is our solid. Now we cancel the things that are the same on opposite sides. So our NH4, our NH4, and then our SO4, and our SO4, and we're left with the actual equation, which is going to be this right here. All right, now at the end, don't forget to go back and put your AQs on your two ions, okay? All right, and that's how you do um, net ionic equations.